Let's look at the models of monopolistic competition. The models of monopolistic competition include Wicksell and Cairns theory of excess capacity, Chamberlain's concept of excess capacity and his selling cost theory. Let's take a look at the theory of excess capacity as given by Wicksell and Keynes first. So the doctrine of excess or unutilized capacity is always associated with the monopolistic competition in the long run period and it's defined as the difference between ideal or the optimum output and the output that's actually attained in the long run period. So when we talk about perfect competition, the demand curve AR is tangential to the long run average cost curve that is the LAC curve at its minimum point and there's full equilibrium where LMC is equal to MR and AR that is the price equals the minimum LAC. So it means that in the long run with the entry of new firms the existing firms need to make the best use of their resources to produce at the point of the lowest average total costs. So at this point E we can see that this abnormal profits meaning that there's no profit no loss and this is because the MR is equal to the LMC and it's also equal to the price or the AR and that point is also equal to the LAC and the minimum point of the LAC curve is at the point E and therefore OQ is going to be the most efficient output which the society will be enjoying. So always remember that the most efficient output is where the average cost is the minimum amount. So this is the ideal or optimum output which the firms produce in the long run. So what about monopolistic competition then? Let's take a look. So the demand curve in the monopolistic competition is not horizontal like we have under the perfect competition but it's downward sloping. The downward sloping demand curve cannot be tangent to the LAC curve at its minimum point. The demand curve of the monopolistic competitive firm is D and MR1 is its corresponding marginal revenue curve. So here LAC and LMC are the long run average and marginal cost curves. The firm is in equilibrium at E1 where the LMC curve cuts the MR curve from below. So its optimal profit maximizing output level is at OQ1 and the profit maximizing price that it would sell at this output level would be at point A1 where it touches the demand curve and the price is fixed at OP1. So now OQ1 is the equilibrium output but not the ideal output because D is tangent to the LAC curve at point A1 and that is not the minimum point of the LAC curve. The minimum point of the LAC curve is at point E and the point that is tangent to the LAC curve is at A1 which is to the left of the minimum point E. So any effort on the part of the firm to produce beyond this output level OQ1 will mean losses as when we go beyond the equilibrium point E1 the long run marginal cost is greater than the marginal revenue. The LMC is greater than MR1. So the ideal output of this monopolistic competitive firm is OQ but the equilibrium output is at OQ1 which is less than OQ and therefore the firm has negative excess capacity measured by QQ1 which it cannot utilize working under monopolistic competition. Now when we compare the equilibrium positions under monopolistic competition and perfect competition we can see that the output of a firm under monopolistic competition is smaller and the price of its product is higher than under the perfect competition. So the monopolistic competition output OQ1 is less than the perfect competitive output OQ and the monopolistic competitive price OP1 is greater than the perfect competition price OP. This is because of existence of excess capacity under the monopolistic competition and excess capacity as we already said is the difference between the ideal output and the output actually attained in the long run. So that's the theory of excess capacity. Now let's take a look at the Chamberlain's concept of excess capacity. 
So, Professor Chamberlain's concept of excess capacity is different from the ideal output under perfect competition. Now, according to Chamberlain, as long as there is freedom of entry and price competition in the product group under monopolistic competition, the tangency point between the firm's demand curve and the LAC curve would lead to the ideal output. That is, even though the tangent point is to the left of the ideal output, it would lead to the ideal output. This is because customers want product differentiation. They are willing to accept increased production costs in return for choice and variety of products that are available under monopolistic competition. So Chamberlain says that the difference between the actual long run average cost of production of the monopolistic firm with free entry and with price competition and the minimum LAC represents this cost of differentness due to product differentiation and he does not regard this difference in average cost of production as a measure of excess capacity as we saw in the theory of excess capacity but let's look at what the assumptions of chamberlain's excess capacity are one is that the number of firms is large and each firm produces a similar product independent of the others and it can charge a lower price and attract others customers and if it raises its price, it's going to lose some of its customers. And also, consumers' preferences are fairly and evenly distributed among different varieties of products. No firm has any form of institutional monopoly over any product. The firms are free to enter. And finally, the long-run cost curves of all the firms are identical and U-shaped. So now let's look at the excess capacity as described by Chamberlain with price competition. To explain the diagram for Chamberlain's concept of excess capacity, we use his concept of group equilibrium. So this group equilibrium is nothing but the equilibrium of the industry under a monopolistic competitive market. Usually the word industry refers to all the firms producing a homogeneous product but under monopolistic competition every product is differentiated and therefore we don't use industry but group of firms producing a similar product. And so Chamberlain puts together firms that produce very closely related product and calls them product groups. The long run group equilibrium is by the means of two demand curves DD and DD so one is in the uppercase DD and another one is uh, the lowercase D and so the uppercase D is the industry's demand and the lowercase D is the firm's demand so now let's come back to Chamberlain's concept of excess capacity suppose the initial short-run equilibrium is at point S where the demand curves of firm DD and the group demand curve DD intersect and the existing firms are earning supernormal profits because this is over and above the LAC curve. And in the long run, attracted by those supernormal profits, new firms enter into the group. Now they produce the similar product and this reduces the sales of each firm in the group and this pushes the group demand curve DD to D1, D1. The new equilibrium is at point A1 where the demand curve D1, D1 is tangent to the LAC curve. Simultaneously, the firm's demand curve DD is pushed to the left to D1, D1. The output here is OQ1 and the price is OP1. The competition among the firms leads to price reduction and firm's demand curve D1, D1 slides downwards to D2, D2 along the D1, D1 curve till its tangent to LAC curve at point A2. Simultaneously, the group demand curve D1, D1 is pushed down to D2, D2 and it intersects both D2, D2 curve and LAC curve at A2. This is the long-run stable equilibrium position of the group. Here, the ideal output is OQ2 at Q2 A2 price, earning normal profits and there is no excess capacity. The ideal output under perfect competition is OQI, which is the minimum point of LAC, that is the point L. Output difference Q2 QI between perfect competition and monopolistic competitive outputs is the cost difference that the consumers are willing to pay to enjoy 
variety of products under product differentiation. So according to Chamberlain, there is no excess capacity under monopolistic competition because of product differentiation. Now finally, let's take a look at Chamberlain's concept of selling costs. Selling costs are the expenses on advertisement, salesmanship, free sampling, free service, door-to-door -door canvassing and so on. There is no problem of selling cost under perfect competition because the product is homogeneous. So the firm can sell any quantity of its product at the market price and therefore there is no need for advertising. If the firms want to sell more, competition among them will lead to price reduction until the new equilibrium price is reached. Under monopoly also, selling costs are not required as there are no competitors. But the monopolist may sometimes advertise his product to acquaint the people about the use and price of his product so that they may continue to buy the product. However, under monopolistic competition, the product is differentiated and therefore selling costs are very essential to push up the sales. They are incurred to persuade a buyer to purchase one product in preference to another. Chamberlain defines them as costs incurred in order to alter the position or shape of the demand curve for a product. The difference between production costs and selling cost is that production costs include all expenses incurred in making a particular product and transporting it to its destination for customers, while selling costs are the costs incurred to change consumers' preferences for a particular product, and they are incurred in order to raise the demand for one product at a given price.